process of decomposition has begun. This is not the first time we have doubted ourselves. The making of I before the one requires individuals to undergo a complete breakdown, estranging body from mind. Once the Kool-Aid is consumed, the body acts as a coup to overthrow the insecure tyrant that is castled within the skull. What appears as dysfunction is only the body exploring alternative methods of survival. Heartbeats override quantize, pumping faster, forcing a more rapid flow. Organs combine or split it into subsystems. Vocal cords grow dissonant, causing tones and pitches to shift. It is purely through spirit that the body is able to withstand such chaotic harmony. The soul releases every drop of life force it holds, and for a moment, the individual feels an overwhelming sense of presence, a capsulated capsule of time and space where all of human drama unfolds as a farcical play, and the choice is remade to assume the role of protagonist, exactly where you are, doing exactly what you're doing, here, now. But I guess every rebellion begins well, which leads us to our current unpresent state. The mind is a trickster, a dictator, a master of propaganda spreading rumors like tumors. The question of can becomes a cancer. Transformation translates as death. The pain of the body parting from all it knows depresses the hope of joining all it believes. I just can't lose myself is our answer, our response. Running from our fear, there is comfort in finding ego. As the fight reaches its heights, the final stage of self-dismantle is entered. Prone to inducing delusions and hallucinations, common reports consist of haunting laughter, one-eyed monsters, temptresses, flashing lights, distorted mirrors, and other optical illusions, described as a dark and eerie carnival. Go forth in strength, for the one circus nights awaits.